And welcome back, fellow gamers of the world. Today we're doing a beginner's guide slash let's play for Krokgar. Um, to give you guys a general idea of what I do for my Krokgar uh, campaigns, I hope it gives some useful information, uh, helpful tips, because I'm going to be going over provinces, battle diplomacy, and gameplay. I hope you enjoy. So let's get into it. So Krokgar is a beast. He is an absolute animal. Um, no pun intended there. He is very strong on the battlefield, especially when you get his Carnosaur. So to get him to that point, let's show you how to get him to that point. So what I like to do is I go to the Golden Tower and I build the landmark, the Golden Tower of the Gods immediately. The reason being is, yes, growth is absolutely amazing. But the Golden Tower here just offers so much income, control, research rate, and minus corruption and provides a garrison of Temple Guards where we don't have to worry about the Skaven as much um, attacking the Golden Tower. And eventually you'll also be probably going to war with Manfred. Um, so you have to be preparing for that. Next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about Geomantic Webs. So what are Geomantic Webs? They are links between province capitals and provide provinces with powerful commandments. So what this means is, is strength, there's different strength levels. So Basically, the more green the color is, the better your um, your geomantic web is. So right now, this means that the um, this is strength rank one. It's because it's runes and enemy settlements. So over here, um, once we get into that too, next turn, this will also be covered in orange because it's owned and or neutral settlements. Then building geomantic pylon and allied settlements is yellow. Green is you have the geomantic spire and five is geomantic locust. So it depends on the tier building you have and how many um, provinces you have in the area to determine what your geomantic web is. And what this does is it buffs your commandments for your um, province here. So what we'll do is we will show you that once we capture the settlement, just so you kind of get a general idea. Now, what we're going to do is spend our technology, which right now, uh, the cool thing is he already starts with two technologies researched for source units, which makes them absolute tanks. And this will make them even do more damage. So what we're going to do is now take our hero here and we're going to put them in Krokgar's army to do a little more, uh, to help do a little more damage and buff our units in battle. We're now going to do diplomacy. We're going to take the diplomacy with the wood elves here because they're going to die from Manfred anyway. So we might as well just get money and Manfred's going to declare war on us no matter what we do. Now, what we're going to do is grab a trade agreement. A trade agreement is an agreement between two parties to trade to basically make money. So we're going to make money off of Teclas. And also what that does is improve your relationship with people. Now, non-aggression packs means they're not going to attack you. Military access means they can march their armies to your territory with, like, no penalties. Defensive alliance means that um, we're basically, if he gets declared war on, I can, I can decide to come to his aid then at that point. And military alliance basically means you have no choice. Like, you're... Your, you coordinate everything together. And then the peace tree tab is if you're at war with somebody, they want to make peace, you want to make a little money from them, you can also make peace with them. So a cool thing, another cool thing about the diplomacy tab here, which I accidentally exited out, is you can actually tell who's likely to be friends with you and who's likely to declare war on you. So the most likely people to declare war on you is Clan Mordrin, Arachnoros, Leafcutter's Tribe, and the Draken Hoof Conclave. Now who's likely to be friends with you? Order of the Lore Masters? Bowmen of Orion and Ironbrow Expedition. So keep that in mind as you um, progress in your campaign. Now what we're going to do is take Krokgar to attack uh, Teo Tinquia. And it says Valiant Defeat. Don't worry about this. Um, if you see, if you've seen my um. A Nagashazar turn 10 video with Kugov, you can actually basically just put everything here, make the AI clump in, charge in, and just beat the crap out of them. Um, for some reason on this map, because it's the same map as Nagashazar, it just bugs out the AI where they just clump over here. Now, even if the AI weren't to clump out um, and don't do that as well, you can still come from here to take minimal casualties from the tower, break through the gate, and beat them up here with your source unit. So it's still effective for either the... Um, AI not acting properly or assaulting the the capital here. So let's fight the battle because we have a Stagadon, we have Coldwood Riders, and we have Krokgar. So, now that we are in the battle, we're going to start a deployment and we're going to go to this right side of the map. Um, just so we don't get hit by the towers because these towers can do quite a bit of damage. Um, 
I think Skaven have one of the most strongest towers in the entire game. And the reason why we're stacking up our units here is so that um, they Skaven have a special ability called Dwellers Down Below, which is super annoying. That they can basically, in battles, they can summon units to come attack you from behind. What we're going to do is stack our units up so we take um, everything attacks everything in like one big blob here so that their um, Skaven can't do as much damage. What we're going to do is try to put these guys in the center of it so they take the least amount of damage as well. Put them in the center. And we're going to put these guys in the center as well. Now, the cold one riders, we're going to position them back further so they don't get um, stuck in with that. And we're going to put our Stegodon and put this in the front. So the settlement here, the dwellers down below, depending on the settlement, they can do um, two to six um, summons of their uh, dwellers down below. Um, they're only going to have two to three on the settlement here, so you only have to worry about two of those. And you're going to use your Cold One Spear Riders to route them off um, in the battle here. Now what we're also going to do is turn off Toggle Fire at will with our Pink Cohort Javelins because we don't want them to waste their ammo. We're going to start the battle, we're going to grab our Cold One Riders, and we're going to hit fast forward here. Um, just to fast forward the process of these Skaven doing Dwellers down below. So they usually do it around 59.10, 59.10 to 59.8, 08 to 59.12. Like, yeah, as you can see right there. It depends, um, but it's generally about every minute they do it. So now that they broke off, we can come over. And what's going to happen is if they even do come back, they're going to crumble anyway. Let's move our units forward so we don't get hit by the tower. There we go. There's another one. We're going to charge in. And I think they may have... So that's two. Let's go back here. Yep, there we go. And now we shouldn't be able to be hit by the tower now. Now, let's see. Do they have another summon? They don't have another summon. We're going to wait until 57 minutes here. Um, if they do have another summon, they'll summon it right about now. They don't now guess what we can go attack the gate so what we're gonna do is go attack the gate with our units here and the reason why we're doing this is for the ai to glitch out for some reason they do this on this settlement is if you send your um stagodon or whatever your hero to go attack the gate and it breaks it open you run them in for a few seconds and then run them out all the ai will either stack up here here or back here for some reason like they'll just start moving as you can see it's just weird so what that means too is you have all the skaven in one spot they'll even come from the other side of the map it's really weird so we broke the gate open already we're gonna just move them out of here move them right there and we're just gonna wait they're probably gonna throw um there's skaven slingers at us yeah look at they're all grouping up right there and we're gonna wait for them to come this way too as you can see like i said they're coming this way so let's be patient we're going to hold off on um, fully uh, coming up on them. What we're going to do next is because what we're going to do is we're going to charge our um, cal cavalry in. Let me get the chance here. But I want to wait till they're all together so we can beat them all up at once. So what we're going to do is blob tactics here. Now let's move our blob forward. We can move our... Store our spears here. We can move these guys right here. I'd like the uh, bless units to take the least amount of damage possible. We're actually going to put these guys here. These guys here. Um, and then our buffer, we're going to put him up here. We're going to take our uh, cavalry. We're going to move them forward too. As you can see, like they're literally all going up there and they're just clumping. Like they don't... It, like I said, it's weird. It's something that they do just in this settlement. Uh, type so this the the maps that share the same map as this is I feel like you're playing Kislev Hell Pit shares the same map and a few others as well so it, it's just really weird okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the cold ones charge through completely we're gonna have these guys charge in have these guys charge in have these guys charge in we're gonna have these guys charge in as well the cold ones actually we're gonna push them back push them back push them back push them back Actually, now it's too late. It's too late. Let's just get into these clan rats over here. With the oh no, no, you guys go over here. Cold ones, we're gonna have go up this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's not good. That's not good. We're gonna have to get them out of there. They got trapped in our own units. We're actually gonna put these up on the wall, and we're gonna do toggle fire at will. We're gonna grab our stagadon and try to break them free, because we don't want these guys dying. We need. We're gonna need these guys in the battles ahead here. 
That was a huge, huge upset right there. Like, I am not happy about that at all. And these guys took way too much damage, too. That's not good. They're spending way too much time trying to get through that damn door. Come on, get in there. No, no, I did not say to charge back in. Come on. Come on. Listen to Papa. We're actually going to have the Stagadon push through here and go for the archers here because they're the most annoying at the moment. Come on, you can do it. We're going to have Krokar get in the battle here. Our cavalry basically weren't able to do anything, which really sucks. Why are they why are they moving over here? Whatever. Okay, I need you guys to get in the battle. We're gonna have them retreat because I don't know why. Okay, we're gonna give them a little bit a little buff, I guess. Let them beat up over here. Those are spearmen. I'm not too worried, though. What are these ones? Oh, those are spearmen, too. We gotta worry about that. Let's just go help our clump over here. Yeah, let's just go help our clump. Okay. We're gonna take quite a bit of casualties here, actually. Probably. Unfortunately. But if we can break them slowly, like this... Oh, that's gonna hurt. And move forward a little bit, clump at a time, we should be okay. Now that they used up all their ammo, we're going to have them get off the wall, and we're going to have these guys take that spot. Okay, now we're going to have this go charge over there. So we're actually going to have this move up this way with their routing units. Have this charge into there. Now charge into that. There we go. That's going to hurt. Oh my goodness. Oh! As you can see, the AI here won't even come help them. Like, it's just bugged. I don't know why. It just is. I Like, I seriously have no idea why. Okay, now we're going to send these guys in to go blob, too. These guys should start firing soon. Have these guys get in there. Mm. They pulled a sneaky deaky on us. They can't fire if they're all on the wall. They should run away, though. We're going to do melee only for this. Just so we can get them off the wall here. Okay, now we're going to blob up. We're going to use this on him here. Have him charge over there. Those are just clan rats, so I'm not too worried. We're actually going to charge on the backside of this. Generally, you don't want to charge into spear units, but they are Skaven slaves, so I'm not too worried. Okay, and now we're going to have these go here. We're going to have him go on this other side, and we're going to have these charge down here as well. So those should break, and we should be able to fire our um, archers here too. Now we're going to buff the um, this unit here because they're taking the most damage. Now we're going to charge forward. Now these units charge forward as well. We're just going to be one big blob all together. We're going to charge the cavalry into here to do some damage. We're going to charge these forward. Fire at will. I'm going to put them right here just in case these return to the battlefield here. The cabs should be able to keep routing them off. I just don't want them to take too, too much damage. To the point where they can't heal up. So we're just going to charge in. Watch that charge from the backside. Ooh, baby. I just love the look of dinosaurs. Look how cool the dinosaurs look. We're gonna keep having them do that. We're gonna have these charge forward here. Yep, and these are gonna keep routing them off. We're actually gonna now rotate back this way. Um, and we're gonna have these guys go right here for if they come back. I want the um, our cavalry to take the least amount of damage possible. Now we're gonna move this forward. We're gonna buff this bad boy. Blob forward. And we're actually going to take these guys off the battlefield here so they can re, uh, recuperate. They took a little too much damage for my liking. But 
We're gonna throw some spears into these guys and get these guys off the battlefield. There we go. Now they're running away. We can get these guys out of here. Now we're gonna rotate these guys to hit them. Just rotate this direction. Have this blob charge forward. We're going to use our Staggerdon to go after those archers real quick. So we're going to use our mass to push through here. But those archers, um, they're not really archers, they're slingers. But they can still do a gen, uh, like a pretty decent amount of damage to us if we're not careful. Let's get in the battle here. Let's move our um, skink unit back here and let's buff our um, Staggerdon here. The so Staggerdon can do some damage. We're going to charge into the backside of these Skaven Slave Spears. Just to do some more damage here. Where are these guys? We want them to get out of here. We're move these guys forward here. We're going to have them go attack these guys with these guys here. Yeah, these guys go attack these guys. There we go. Now we're going to have this move forward into this. And we should be able to get army penalties uh, soon here. Should be able to get it pretty soon here. Yep, they're chasing off completely. We're going to chase these guys off completely. We're going to grab these guys and put them in the back. What we're going to do is now fast forward the battle here. Charge everybody forward. Everybody forward. We're going to buff this guy. Charge forward. Charge forward. Charge forward. There we go. We're going to go hit those archers. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Dodge, dodge, there we go. Everyone keep charging forward. And they should take leadership penalties pretty soon here. I'm going to give the Staggerdon a little buff. And GG! We have now beat the Skaven and took this settlement on turn one. So your main goal here is you want to keep the Cold One Spear Riders alive, the Feral Staggerdon alive, and your Blessed Source units. Um, the Source Spears, not as important, but you definitely want to keep them alive and end battle. I guess we could try to get as much kills as possible. It's just chasing down Skaven's a little annoying because they're fast. So we'll just chase down these ones and then... Yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to end the battle. Close victory, baby. From a Valiant defeat to a close victory. Keep in mind that this is also Legendary very hard, so it'll be a lot easier on um, Legendary normal. Honestly, on Legendary Normal, you can actually auto-resolve this with minimal casualties. The um, reason why I played Legendary very hard is to show you the absolute worst-case scenario. Look at the amount of kills our Blessed Saurus units got. They're just animals, and the Stegodon is just amazing, too. Absolutely amazing. We only lost 150 units. Not horrible. Not great. But it was a uh, settlement battle. So now we're going to occupy. So now we have missile resistance plus 10%, which actually is pretty good. We're going to grab uh, two more skink cohorts for this army here. We're going to grab Crocker. We're going to spend his skills. We're going to grab the spawning of uh, Exultal. Reason being, as we get physical resistance 15%, and the spawning of Exultal, we get uh, physical resistance plus 20% and vigor per second. Minus 1%, which means that he can run more, which means that he won't get tired as more, which means he's more effective in battle, which is really strong. Now we're going to grab Harmonic Convergence, since we've been using that uh, ability a lot to give our main units like more defense and stronger abilities, so we're going to do that. Now let's grab a Commandment. We're going to be grabbing the... Um, we're going to grab the... We're going to grab the Alignment of Order Commandment so that we can, um, the reason being is, let me show you what this is. Um, it gives you plus two control. Skaven like to spread plagues, so it gives you less chance of plague spreading. Plague duration is also lower. Enemy heroes action chance is 10% less, which Skaven like to do a lot of hero actions. You gain 10% um, less attrition when under siege, which is really strong. And you gain an ability to make their missile units useless, which is also really strong because Skaven used a lot of range units. Okay. So now, after that turn, we're going to be doing Diplomacy real quick. And we are going to actually end our turn here. Now we are in turn two. I'd like to do something a little weird here. 
instead of going north, I actually like to go this way. I know that's weird, but I just like going this way because the thing about this province is, is these Skaven aren't ready to fight you yet. So their armies aren't very strong. So you can actually auto-resolve most of the battles down here. Um, and here, right here, there's actually a gold mine that where you can uh, fund your armies uh, more for the battle ahead with these Skaven. And then once these are both wiped out, wiping out the south and then the north. Because eventually, if you go north, these guys will declare war on you in the south and attack here. But if you go south, you can wipe them out, hold these settlements, and then go north. And then you're going to be fighting Manfred. So it, it's a pretty good strategy. What we're going to do is grab two more of these units here. We're going to recruit a Saurus Lord right here. Saurus Old Blood. This one has Weapon, and this one has Enable Poison Attack. So we're actually going to do Weapon Master to make him stronger in case he has to hold the settlement himself. And then we're going to uh, check our Diplomacy real quick here. Yes. And we are going to now um, talk a little bit more about the Geomantic Webs. The Geomantic Webs, as I mentioned earlier in the video about their strength, if you look, the Geomantic uh, Webs also have direct reflect of your commandments right here. So it can make you have more growth, more income, more research rate, more construction time, more winds of magic. It can have you make you have better alignment of war and even a better alignment of order. So the reason to get that is to get the better commandments for your settlements. And now let's end our turn. So now we are on turn three. So what you're going to be doing on turn three is check your diplomacy first because um, potentially the Iron Brock's mission might be friendly or someone might be willing to trade with you or so on and so forth. Nope. Okay. I always check diplomacy first thing on the first of the turn. Reason being is your actions may cause something worse to happen or um, better. So you want to um, make sure to check it. Now what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be recruiting two units here instead. And then eventually we're going to be recruiting a lord over there too. So let's attack Sotex Trail. So as you can see, we revealed another Skaven faction is sent to the south called Clan Morbius. We're going to declare war. We're going to hit that little check mark. And we are actually going to hit the um, auto resolve button. And the reason being um, is just because if you fight this battle, they actually have a wizard um, with the warp lightning ability. And they are just going to cast the crap out of that. And it can actually do really good damage against Blessed Saurus here. And Saurus units. And it can really wipe out your skink units. So. Generally, if I see something with a wizard like this where I can't auto-resolve it with low casualties, I generally do it against Skaven because Skaven aren't that strong. But what is strong is this ability right here. We are actually going to auto-resolve this. As you can see, we didn't take all that much damage either, so that is good. We're going to occupy this settlement here. And we are actually going to uh, recruit two more units here as well help us for the battle ahead now we're going to spend our skill points and we're going to actually going to get um route marcher and iron disciplinarian reason being is the um lizardmen in this area because it's all skaven corruption um they actually struggle with holding their um uh control and then we're going to grab wind blast next so the next thing we're going to do we have units being recruited here we're actually going to recruit a lord over here and we're just going to recruit a skink. And the reason being is just so that they don't attack this building, they come and attack this one. So now we are going to end our turn. Okay. On turn four here, what you're going to do is take Krokgar. You're going to put him here. Uh, leave him there for a second. We're going to assess our other options here. We're going to grab this for 2,000 to upgrade this settlement. To grab another Skink Johort Javelin right here to save this area. Then we're going to check our diplomacy again. Defend. Make sure that we don't have any money making opportunities. Okay. So, what you can do here, and now this is completely your choice. This is completely your choice. You can sit here, replenish your troops a little longer if you'd like. You can sit here, replenish your troops a little longer if you like, or you can go um, stance march and just march forward. 
Now, with that being said, I always usually go March stance just because um, I don't want them to build up while we're building doing this war. But our units did take a little bit of damage. So you could go back to Sotex Trail, heal up. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go March stance and charge forward here. So that they have less time to build up for what we are going to be bringing. Okay. Now what we're going to do is they're recruiting their troops. They're doing that. We're going to check our diplomacy one more time at the end of the turn, like I always do, just Lord, to make sure now. we're good. And we're actually going to end our turn now on turn four. The AI is going to summon a army right here. What I recommend doing is you can either go in astromancy stance or encampment stance and just going right next to the settlement as close as possible. If you'd like, if you want to see if they will attack you. Generally, they won't attack you, so this is nice because you gain um, ambush defense chance, you know, melee defense leadership, but generally they won't attack you, so you're better off actually just um, attacking the settlement. If we go attack the settlement here, we're going to attack that. And what's going to happen is this hero is going to attack us with their lord on the actual battlefield. So if we just continue the siege here... What they're going to do is probably attack us next turn, and we can then um, do some damage on the battlefield versus the settlement. We're going to check our diplomacy to make sure nothing's going to happen here, and we're going to siege them. Now what we're going to do here is we're actually going to recruit two troops over here, just to give them a fighting chance for if this army comes this way. Because sometimes this Gaven in this campaign will either come up here, go for the Golden Tower, or they'll just come straight for this city here. It really depends on your campaign. Also, what really depends is the cool thing about the uh, Blessed Saurus units, or Blessed units, is that it depends every campaign what Blessed Saurus units you'll get on turn 5. So it could be a Stagadon, it could be Chameleon Stinks, it could be Blessed Saurus Warriors, it could be Blessed Saurus Warrior Spears. You don't know what it's going to be. So I personally like when I get the Stagadon. Sometimes I'll just keep replaying just to get the Stagadon. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. I just really like the artillery staggered down right off the bat. Now what we're going to do is check our diplomacy real quick here. Should be good. Now what we're going to do is end our turn. It looks like they didn't come and attack us. So one thing you can do is now change from this stance. Go to this stance. Uh, makes a uh, situation like siege makes ready for percentage. Yeah, since we don't have to worry, you could now attack this unit instead. They're going to run away. Then go back sieging on the settlement here. It's still going to be a valiant defeat, and you're going to have to wait out one more turn here. Or what you could do is, since this is still that same type of settlement, you could do the cheesy route and um, do the same right side thing, but they have so many units... Um, it's going to be difficult. Uh, we do have a Wind Blast. So we could actually siege the settlement with that Wind Blast here. Which that would actually work out in our favor because then we can um, get this quicker. We'd have to get them to move right here. So it's a hit or miss though because we'd have to get them to get closer. But we could bog our units up. So we're actually just going to hold out one more turn. Okay, we're going to siege the settlement. What we're going to do is, as you can see, here they come. So they are going to be grabbing a bunch of units there. What we're going to do is start bringing this down. Let's see. And we're going to bring this down to go help support Tekloquintiqua. I can't say it. And a turn here. And we're going to hit and turn. Now on turn 7 here, your source unit should actually be a lot stronger. So you'll be pretty well off here. We're going to go ambush stance so they don't expect us here. What we're going to do is recruit two more units here. They're most likely going to attack. So we're going to hold off there. We're now going to grab the tablet spawning so we don't have to spend as much money on the skinks. What we're going to do now is we should be able to take out this city with the Pyrrhic victory. I don't like that. 
So, what we're going to do... We're going to continue the siege for one more turn. Because the biggest threat to this province is right here, and this shouldn't be as bad, and those shouldn't be as bad either. So now we're going to hold off one more turn. We're going to recruit some more troops here. We're going to check our diplomacy real quick. Yes. What we're going to do is now end our turn. 